Hey all, Blake here with another video and today I've got a species spotlight that I'm really interested to bring to you. This is a species of fish that I've been really excited about for quite a long time and a few months ago I was lucky enough to get my own hands on some. So today we're going to do a bit of a spotlight on the uh, Polypterus senegalis aka the dinosaur Bashir aka the Senegal Bashir. Let's jump straight into the video. So to get started we'll talk about pronunciation because it is something that really trips people over when we're talking about Bashirs. You'll hear people refer to them as bikers, bitches, uh, bashirs, but if you trace it back it goes all the way back to the 1800s and is derived from Arabic language and there's a clear cut uh, pronunciation that is Bashir. So that's the one that I would recommend using especially if you are in sort of educational settings. There's two large categories of Bashirs, there's what's known as upper jaw species and lower jaw species. And this is a descriptor of their mouth structure. For example, upper jaw, their upper jaw goes uh, to the edge or to the same distance of their lower jaw. Lower jaw, obviously their lower jaw extends further than their upper jaw. Senegals fall into the upper jaw species as well as Ornata pinus, weak CI and Dalhousie Bashirs. And lower jaws can, you know, some examples are Enlicari or uh, Congo bushiers. Senegal bushiers grow between 9 to 15 inches, which is about 22 to 37 centimeters, so they're quite a large fish. They're named after the Senegal River Basin, which is where they come from, and they're the most common bushier available within the hobby. Typically, they have sort of a grey body with a mostly roundish head. Uh, although there are albino and longfin varieties now available within the hobby. They are semi-aggressive and they're also a long-term commitment. Some Senegal Bashirs can live up to 40 years in captivity, so um, make sure that you're in it for the long haul. That's a lot of water changes and a lot of considerations for care that you've got to provide. So um, don't just go out and buy them on a whim because they are pretty affordable these days depending on where you are. Senegal Bashirs have a slender snake-like body and spikes on the top. They have visible nostrils and large paddle-like fins at the front which they can actually use to walk up on land. Now where they come from in the wild it's not unusual for um, areas of water to dry up so they have been found to sort of walk their way across the land to find new sources of water to live within which is really interesting and definitely shows off those prehistoric ca characteristics. They do have pretty poor eyesight but to compensate for this they have really really great sense of smell. They also have those protruding nostrils that'll help them direct their way towards the scent um, so that they can get some food. Senegal Bashirs are widespread in the wild and come from around about 30 countries within Africa. These include areas of Egypt, Sudan, Tanzania, of course Senegal, Uganda, Zambia and many many others. Senegal Bashirs often inhabit floodplains, estuaries and um, beds of lakes, areas that are going to have lots of plant cover. This is because just like you and I, Bashirs have a set of two working lungs. They're going to go often to the surface to breathe oxygen and they are vulnerable at that point. So they'd far prefer to do that within the cover of some plant life and nature so that they're not at risk of prey from birds and larger fish species. Because of this, just like bettas and anabantoids, they are quite resilient and they can withstand low oxygen environments and bogs and swamps and areas like that. Hey guys, I'll just interrupt this video for a minute to let you know that a lot of the resources uh, in this video came from this book here, the Baisha Handbook. Now lucky enough, I got my hands on this uh, a couple weeks ago and I've been flicking through it and I have to say that the information is super concise, super detailed. It's got all sorts of stuff in there from pronunciation to um, size to location. Uh, there's also some really beautiful artwork in there as well. And overall, I'm just stoked to have this beautiful uh, book as part of my collection now. So definitely would recommend picking one up for yourself if you are interested in Baisha Care. I'll leave a link in the description below and as a pinned comment if you want to get one of these for yourself and I highly recommend you do so. Let's jump straight back to the video. Basic 10 parameters, you're going to want to keep the water around about 28 degrees Celsius or 82 degrees Fahrenheit within you know, a couple of degrees either side of that. PH wise, they'll be able to handle anything. As we just said, they're super resilient and um, breathing from the surface helps 
them to live within a huge variety of pHs. So anything from six to 10, they'll do perfectly fine within. In terms of tank size, you're gonna to wanna to keep Senegal Bashirs in pretty much a five foot aquarium. Plan to upgrade these guys in the future because full grown adults, as we said, get quite large and general average is gonna be between 10 to 12 inches. So um, they are gonna be quite active. They swim around quite a bit and uh, just give them some space to live within. Don't compromise on width and height either. Give them maybe 18 by 18 inches or 45 by 45 centimeters to go along with the five foot or the 150 centimeter length. As well as that, make sure that you have very, very tight lids, lids that are not gonna have little gaps for feeding or anything like that because they will find their way out of any hole. They're excellent jumpers and uh, you don't wanna end up with them on your floor. When setting up the tank, don't put in any large pieces of gravel because they can be mistakenly ingested while they are eating and that can lead to impaction and other issues. Keep them on fine sand or an aqua soil that can break up if accidentally ingested so that you don't have any of those digestion issues. They are plant safe, but as we mentioned, they are gonna get big and they have a big paddle sort of tails. So they might knock uh, and uproot finer leaf plants. So keep it to stuff with some extensive root systems. Amazon swords are good, Java fan you can attach to anything, that sort of deal. But don't necessarily keep them in an ADA, super fine planted aquarium. Senegal Bashirs are carnivore, but you still wanna give them a varied diet. Things that are great proteins to feed them include insects and worms, white fish, mussels, and other high quality proteins. You can supplement with a high quality protein pellet as well. They will readily take to pellets. So just uh, don't give them too much oils because that can leach up to the surface and inhibit their ability to breathe. So do keep that in mind. In terms of tank mates, it's important not to keep Bashirs with plecos because Bashirs have gananine, which in, uh, enhances their slime coat and makes it more salty. And plecos are extremely drawn to this. So for that reason that you might find that your Bashir, if housed with a pleco, will have all these rasps and areas of damage on their skin. It's just not a great idea. And I'd never recommend keeping the two together. Similarly, Bashirs get pretty big and their mouth can open up quite a lot if you imagine sort of a crocodile or an alligator. So small fish are just not a great idea because you'll find that uh, these guys are ambush predators and they'll sneak right up on uh, you know a platy or something like that and there'll be no more platy. Some good tank mates include uh, non-predatory catfish, larger schooling fish like rainbow fish and silver dollars, uh, eels as well are pretty good. Anything that's going to be large enough to not fit inside the mouth. Things like your tetras, um, platys and the like, live bearers are just not a great idea. Barbs you might be able to get away with for the larger barbs like your um, denison barbs or your mascara barbs. Other smaller barbs may not be a good option. Just use common sense when pairing things with your Senegal Bashir and uh, don't underestimate how wide their jaw can open. When it comes to breeding, females are gonna be larger and thicker, but you can also tell by the shape of their anal fin. Females are gonna have a slender anal fin, whereas males are gonna have more of a cupping, larger sort of anal fin. Females generally have to be about five to six years old to be in breeding condition, whereas males will be about one to two years old. And females will often like to breed with younger males as well. It's thought to be a trigger to have a grassy floor that the Bashirs are gonna know that their eggs will fall and disperse beneath and be safe from predatory fish. Wild Senegal Bashirs breed during the rainy season. The female and male swim parallel through plant matter. Eventually, the male will cup their uh, anal fin and uh, catch the eggs deposited from the female, fertilize those eggs and then disperse them amongst all the leaf litter, plant matter, and that sort of thing. After three or four days, the eggs should hatch. The babies will be born with a yolk sac, just like many other fish, but they'll be big enough to accept baby brine shrimp uh, as soon as that egg sac is depleted. Neither parent really takes care of any of the fry. They just sort of are left to their own devices. So it is recommended if you want to have a successful batch to separate the eggs from the parents once they've successfully fertilized. So there you go guys, that's my comprehensive care guide on Senegal Bashirs. Hopefully you enjoyed it. Hopefully there's some tidbits of knowledge in there that you found useful. 
I do certainly have to thank Josh's Fish for providing me with uh, his beautiful book as well as a lot of the information that was provided in this. He just did a lot of fact checking for me and uh, yeah, I found him to be a really great resource. So I'll put his link down below as well. He does some YouTube videos, so um, it's definitely worth checking out. Overall, uh, if you like the video, it always helps me out to smash like, hit subscribe and all that fun stuff. And I'll catch you on the next one. Thanks for watching.